Oh, that's a, I love that. <laughs> we made it. We're back. It's Wednesday, 3 o'clock. You know what we do. We go live. We're at Blue Ridge Winery, where the mission here is always to add value to your life. By the way, my name is Randy, and I grow grapes. <laughs> I love y'all. Thanks for being a part of my life. I am so excited. Christmas is almost here. You all know I got three babies, and they are flipping out. Oh, my gosh. It is that time of year. They won't sleep for a week. <laughs> I love y'all. <laughs> so this is a special one. Mary Wayne, I love you. How are you? Good to see you. Oh, my gosh. The team is coming together, right? So, guys, in the room here, it's, uh, this is uh, you remember Kim? Kim did a talk a while back on Joy. Do you remember? Remember? It was so. Kim's here, guys. She's right over here. It's so good. <laughs> oh, Dave's here. I love it. And Teresa's over here. We got such a great group in the room. Ken, I see you, Andrew Neff. Look at that. The team is a ride. We're together. <laughs> Good to see you guys. So today, I have such a special presentation for you all. I hope you love this. I'm going to go a little bit slower than normal, but before I jump in, guess what? I got a book out there. I know I keep talking about it. Exposing the Roots. Could you all do something for me? Give me a Christmas present. Go on Amazon and do a review of my book. Even if you read a couple pages. Read the back of it. Read a couple of pages and do a review of my book. I get a lot of emails and text messages and people are calling me. They go, oh my God, Randy, it's changed my life. It's such wonderful stuff. I go, tell the world. Please tell the world. You know? So go on Amazon and do a review of Exposing the Roots. You'll see it there. If you, oh, Ken, thank you, dude. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> yeah, Mary, I love that. Mary, you know, Mary Wade, she did the first review. And Mary Wade, I love that review. Thank you for doing it. Oh, my God. It's, I could, I read it to Mama. She goes, oh, my gosh. Paula, hello, I see you. <laughs> so, guys, this is the Wednesday before Christmas. I love the hearts. I love the hearts. <laughs> it's so good. So, so what happened was Sunday night, I'm laying in bed, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, wow, it's, it's the Wednesday before Christmas. I wanted to do a very special Christmas celebration, Wednesday presentation. I love the hearts, guys. Thanks for that. So this is all about Christmas. We're going to talk about December 25th. December 25th is the most celebrated day of the year globally, around the world. Every single nation in the world, <laughs> I looked it up, <laughs> I made sure, <laughs> the most celebrated day in the world. The world stops to celebrate this single day. And whether people know it or not, the world stops to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. That's what the whole day is about. Anthony, I love you, dude. I'll give you a call then. I know, I know you missed your call. I'll call you, dude. Good to see you, Anthony. <laughs> December 25th. Did you know, though, that Jesus was actually born right around 4 B.C.? In, on, on, in, on December 25th, right on 4 BC. They say it's somewhere between 4 and 6 BC. And our world changed forever from that moment on. And did you know, the very first Christmas, it actually was, it happened in the year 336 AD, after, after Christ, after Christ's death, death, AD. It was the Roman church. The Roman church first, it was the first church to ever, ever celebrate Christmas. And it happened in 336 AD on December 25th. That means it was over 300 years later after Christ lived. That's crazy. That blows my mind. And by the way, AD stands for Anno Dominion. It means after Christ was born. And BC stands for before Christ, right? That's because, you know, we're, we're, you know, AC, BC. You know, this is why our entire calendar around the world is based upon Christ's life. Whether we know it or not. Everything around us revolves around Christ. I tell people, even look at your dollar. <laughs> even, even the money in the United States says, in God we trust. <laughs> it's everywhere. <laughs> so this means that the first Christmas was 340 years after Christ was born. That's crazy, isn't it? 340 years later. In the United States, did you know that today the U.S. is 247 years old? You know how I know this? <laughs> I was born in 1976 on the 200 year anniversary of the, of the country. Anniversary baby, they call me, right? So that means I'm 47, the country is 247 years. And it happened to be that on June 28th, 1870, Ulysses S. Grant made Christmas a federal holiday in the United States. So think about this. It was 94 years later, the United States started, 94 years later, Christmas finally was a, was a federal holiday in the U.S. It took us 94 years to catch up with Europe. Crazy, right? Crazy. Now, you, know, and you may not know this. Oh, Kim, I love that. <laughs> I love that. Kim just, she's in the room right here. <laughs> That's awesome. So you may not know this, but I'm a math guy. 
You know, I went to college for economics, business management, finance. I have degrees in economics stuff. I'm, I'm always been a math guy. I love math. I love numbers. What percentage of the world believes in God? I looked it up. 62%. Two thirds. There's a 10% are atheists and the rest of them, well, they're just not sure. But 62%, two thirds, that's a big number. Ever hear of a guy named Lee Strobel? Most people have never heard of Lee Strobel. Lee Strobel, he was an, he was an atheist, a journalist, and an attorney. <laughs> and he had enough. <laughs> he had enough of this whole Bible Christian thing. He, he was, he was going to put an end to it. He thought, that's it? I'm going to sit out and dis... <laughs> Mary Wayne goes, yes, I've heard of Lee Strobel, right? <laughs> he goes, I'm going to sit out and I'm going to disprove this whole thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to attack the Bible and I'm going to, I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to prove that things that were predicted here didn't really happen there, that it was just all happenstance. And I'm going to, I'm going to just going to tear this thing apart. He wrote, he was going to write a book disproving Christ. He ended up writing a book called a case for Christ. Remember, he's an attorney, a, ca a case, right? A case for Christ. <laughs> Powerful book. Everyone should read it. <laughs> So he dives in. He starts tearing apart the Bible. First, he went after Micah. See, early on in the Bible, Mike, Micah is one of the early writers. And Micah, in 700 BC, before Christ was born, he, he, there were hundreds of cities in the, in the world at that point. Lots of different nations existed at, at this point. And at 700 BC, Micah wrote that Christ would be born in a town called Bethlehem. And 700 years later, on December 25th, we all know what happened. We celebrate it. Then there was this prophecy that happened in 1012 BC. It specified that the Messiah, hands would be pierced. This prediction was made in 10 BC. Now that could be a lucky guess. You know the crucifixion, right? Hands would be pierced. It could be a lucky guess, but... It was, it, th that prediction, it was made 800 years before crucifixion even existed. It wasn't even a thing. It didn't even exist. It wasn't until the Romans started doing it 800 years later, after that prediction. Crazy, right? Did you know, fact about the Bible, the Bible is 62 books, no, I'm sorry, 66 books. It's composed and compiled over 2,000 years. There are 40 authors that came from three separate continents. Okay, let's get our head around this, right? So you pick up a Bible, and it's written by a total of, of, of 40 different people, and there's 66 books in this thing, and 2,000 years it took to create it, okay? Lee Strobel goes, I'm going to tear this thing apart. I'm going to prove that what's in the Old Testament really didn't happen in the New Testament. I'm going to take these prophecies and, and just disprove them. So he tried. He goes around the world. He met with scholars. He met with the people that, ha that had knowledge of this stuff. Turns out, he goes, well, here are the odds. If eight of the prophecies came true in the Bible, eight of them, just eight, the odds of eight coming true are the exact same odds as if I were to take the entire state of Texas and cover the entire state with dollar quarters, one foot thick. Then I made it two foot thick with dollar quarters, covered the entire state of Texas, right? Then I went out there and I took one quarter and I put an X on one quarter. And then I took that one quarter and I went out in Texas and I just put it somewhere. And then I mixed them all up. And I blindfolded you, and I had you walk around Texas for two months, randomly wondering, with a blindfold on. And I said, at the end of two months, I want you to bend down and pick up one quarter. The odds of you finding that quarter is the same odds of eight prophecies coming true in the Bible. Crazy. Crazy, right? That's a crazy statistic. It's hard to get your head around that. The state of Texas is humongous. It takes like 10 hours just to drive through it. Right? Imagine. That's, that's the odds of eight. Imagine if there were 12. Imagine if only 12 of the prophecies came true. Only, only 12. 
This takes it to a level that we can barely comprehend. If 12 prophecies came true in the Bible, it would be the exact same odds as if I were to take one grain of sand from somewhere. It could be a sandbox. It could be an ocean. It could be any one grain of sand. By the way, it's estimated that on the planet, there are 10 to the 20th power or somewhere between 10 and the 25th power of sand. That means 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 all the way to 25 times. We, can, we can't get our head around that number. It's so big, right? But I take one grain of sand and then I get a little tiny etcher and I, I, etch, I etch your initials into it. And then I take that grain of sand and I, I, I get on a plane and I fly out over the oceans and I drop it somewhere. And then I have you wander around the world blindfolded for two years. And then I tell you, after two years of wondering, just reach down and pick up one grain of sand. And the odds of 12 prophecies coming true with the exact same odds of you picking up that exact same grain of sand. It's an impossibility. It's, it's almost like that cannot possibly be chance. It has to be determined. It has to be created. It has to be made. It has to be designed like that. It can't be chance. It actually goes even further, guys. Because guess how many prophecies were made, were made and fulfilled in the Bible? It wasn't 10. It wasn't 8. It wasn't 12. There were 300. 300 I got goosebumps. 300. So let's try to get our head around 300 with a book written over 2,000 years, multiple continents, multiple writers, and 300 prophecies come, come together. The odds of that are so staggering <laughs> that you can't get your head around it. No one can. It would be the same odds as if you could count all the electrons in all the atoms in all the universe and you still wouldn't even be close. That's crazy. Imagine every electron in every atom in the entire universe and you can pick one and we mark it and then you blindfoldedly find it's, it's not just not possible. It's perfect design, you see. You're meant to be here. I'm meant to be here. It's perfect design on every level. The odds are so staggering that I say, it doesn't take any faith to believe. It, it, zero. It takes tremendous faith not to believe. Tremendous. I'm bringing numbers to the world here. I'm giving you statistics. It takes unbelievable faith to say, yeah, I think I could find that grain of sand that had my initials on it, right? Unbelievable, unbelievable faith. I mean, imagine, imagine this. Imagine Jesus shouting down from the cross saying, no, don't cut my robe up and take pieces of it. Throw dice and gamble to see who wins it. After all, we have to fulfill Psalms twenty-two, eighteen. Imagine. Or during his interrogation, that he would say to them, make sure you beat me up and you spit on me. After all, we have to fulfill Isaiah 56. Right? Crazy, right? Or how about after I'm dead, make sure you poke me with a, with a spear in the side. Because after all, Isaiah 12, 10, we got to fulfill that one. Imagine. Right? Carmen, amen. I'm with you on this. Frank, I'm with you. And, and, and by the way, don't forget, don't break my legs. Just like you plan to do with the other two guys on the cross next to me here. Don't break mine, but break theirs because we have to make sure we fulfill Exodus 12, 46 and also Psalms 34, 20. It's, it's impossible. People ask me, why am I so upbeat and positive all the time? I get, I get the question all the time. They go, why are you so upbeat? Why are you enthusiastic? Why are you so full of life? I tell them all the time. If there's hope in your future, there's power in your present. And the Bible is truly the handbook for life. It'll give you every answer that you ever could want in your life. You simply open it up, do what it says, and you will live the best life you ever could imagine. Imagine. Imagine being born and fulfilling the life that you were meant to live. Imagine being born and being paid for simply who you are. When you're fulfilling your life's purpose, you get paid for being who you are. You don't have to do anything. You just be who you are. I love that, Kim. Amen. I'm with you, Kim. I'm with you, Kim, right? <laughs> so this Christmas, this Christmas, I pray... I pray that we all have faith, even if it's as big as a mustard seed. Because if we have faith as big as a mustard seed, God, we can move mountains. I read my book. I love y'all. Merry Christmas. 
Hope you all have a wonderful Christmas. See you guys. See you, Terry. Bye, Ray. See you guys. Bye, y'all.